Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In today's video, we will talk about Transit Virtual Interface. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. And if you want to connect with me on the LinkedIn, you can scan this barcode to connect me with me on my LinkedIn page. So what is Transit Virtual Interface? Let's first talk about the private virtual interface, which we covered in our earlier video. To create the private virtual interface, you need to associate your virtual private gateway with the VPC and using that you create a private virtual interface. So if you have a second VPC, you do the same process, you create a second private virtual interface. But what if we have more than two or three or maybe 100 uh, VPCs which need to connect to on-prem? For that, you need to create 100 virtual private gateway, you need to create 100 private WIF, which is not possible because we have a limit how many private virtual interfaces we can create over a direct net connection. So what is the solution? What we can do, we can use the transit virtual interface for that. For this, we'll create a transit gateway. We'll associate all those VPCs with the transit gateway. Then we'll associate the transit gateway with the direct net gateway. And the direct net gateway is another service which I'm gonna cover in my next video. So for now, just think that there's a direct net gateway with which we associate the transit gateway. And using that, we'll create our transit virtual interface. We have a limit of how many attachments we can attach to transit gateway, which is 5,000, which is way more than the virtual private gateway thing. So now if you have hundreds of VPC in your region, which need to communicate with your on-prem or direct net, you can connect it or associate those with the transit gateway and create transit WIF, and you can utilize that direct net connection to communicate with the on-prem resources. Next, let's see how you can associate a transit gateway with a DirectNet gateway. We'll go to DirectNet gateway page and we'll click on the associate gateway. Here we'll select our transit gateway, which we've created and we'll provide the allowed prefix list. This allowed prefix list basically tells that what routes or what cider we want to announce from AWS side to our on-prem side. So whatever routes you are putting here or whatever cider you will add here, only those ciders will be announced to your on-prem side. So to give an example, if you have three VPCs tasked to transit gateway, each has different cider range. If you're announcing only the cider of the first VPC to on-prem, so only that can communicate with on-prem, other two ciders are not announced to the on-prem. For that, you have to associate those or you have to add those ciders to this allowed prefix list. Next, steps to create transit virtual interface. First, you will provide the name. You will choose the connection on which you want to create your transit virtual interface. You will select the direct net gateway uh, using which you want to create the transit virtual interface. You'll provide the VLAN, BGP ASN, and then you'll provide two IP addresses, one your router IP and one is Amazon router IP. And after that, you will be able to create this transit virtual interface. So looking in this diagram, we have a direct net connection connected. We'll create a transit gateway, associate it with the VPC. Then we'll create a direct net gateway and associate this transit gateway with the direct net gateway and we'll create a transit virtual interface. The two IP addresses you provide, one is on-prem side, another one is for the AWS side, will be assigned. And after that, your routes will be exchanged here. So your Transit Gateway Route Table will be updated that any traffic for the on-prem side or range will go to DirectNet Gateway. And your on-prem uh, route table will be updated with the cider which you added to the allowed prefix that for this cider range, any traffic will go to AWS side of IP address. If you have a second VPC, so by default, when you associate it with the Transit Gateway, your on-prem route table won't update or won't read or learn about the cider range what you need to do like i mentioned earlier you will add that cider range to the allowed prefix list and after that your on-prem route table will read or will learn about this cider range so that's all i wanted to cover in this video hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new if you liked it so please hit the like button and please do subscribe to our channel and hit on the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching folks. Bye.